In this video we will talk about how to process a move in. The move in button is found in the operations screen. We highlight move in under accounts. Once we're in the move in screen it's broken up into three parts. Number one choosing a unit, number two adding a tenant, and number, number three making sure that the charges are correct. In this particular database we have seven units available. I can highlight a unit and click next or double click on a unit to go to the next screen. When we start to have a lot of vacant units, it may be easier for you to choose by size. That's why we see this on the right hand side. We can look at, in this case, the two 5x5s five by, by clicking on 5x5 five five in the right hand side. And now we're looking at those two 5x5s. Five five. If we want to go back to our full list, we click on vacant units at the top. And now we're looking at our seven vacant units. If we're using our revenue management module, we can be shown a push rate which is a suggested rate for a new move-in and we can highlight and choose that. Click Next. In this screen we have a list of current tenants. If we want to choose from an existing tenant we'll choose their name from the list. We can look at current tenants or all past and current by choosing the option on the right hand side. If it's a new tenant we're going to click the Add button and fill in their information name, address, phone number, all the pertinent information that you need to have a successful move-in. The green fields are required. You determine what those green fields are in the setup checklist under tenant defaults. To make this video a little quicker, I'm going to choose an existing tenant from the list. I'll double click on their name. Now I'm in the final section of the move-in. If you're first of the month or anniversary, we can have these defaulted in the setup checklist. In this particular case, we are on an anniversary date basis. Typically, you're on a monthly basis, but you can choose from any of the different date parameters. If we wanted to go quarterly, for example, this would be charging us in three month increments. We'll stick with monthly. If we want to never tax rent, we can check that. Whether or not we want to send an invoice or charge an invoice fee, it's up to you whether or not that's checked or unchecked. We can have the invoice days before due as a specific date. In this case, it's 15, but for this customer, if I want to make it 20, I could change that. So they'd be sent an invoice 20 days before they're due. For document delivery, you can choose per person how you want to interface with them. A lot of customers are moving towards email, so they say, well, we're going to email by default for our different forms. If this particular customer, we don't want to email them by default, we could check print or print and email or mail service in this case. It's up to you what you want to check. We have gate, time zone, and keypad zone, 24 hours or business hours, or you can add different time zones in the setup checklist. You can set people up for auto bill either for a credit card or ACH billing. Put in their information to process their credit card or debit their checking account. We have marketing as required. This is a setup in the setup checklist. I'm going to choose the different options here. We don't have to have marketing defaulted as required, but it is recommended. We can put in vehicle information. If you use promotions, that's something that can be set up in the Corporate Control Center. Some people like to bundle discounts, for example, giving so much off of a rent and also a free lock. That would be an example of adding a promotion. There's an initial rent section where we can edit the rent. We can do it per charge or we could change the rent for every month here. We can have a discount plan. You determine what those discount plans are. You also have settings on whether or not certain individuals can give discounts at all. There's a lot of different options that can be edited in our setup checklist. In this particular example, we can do everything. If you charge a security deposit, that could be added or edited. Same thing with an administrative fee. You can sell merchandise, you can add insurance, and you can have up to eight recurring charges. There's a shortcuts button here if you're in the middle of a move-in and someone else walks in to take a payment. You can click the shortcuts button, go to the payment screen, process the payment, and then come back without ever losing your place. We have photos and e-files. We can have up to nine photos taken of different people. We can either take a web camera photo, scan a driver's license, or if you have a camera or a phone taking the image, you can browse to that image and import it. Once we're finished with this, we save. As we're saving it, it's connecting to our servers here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and that allows you to see this move in on any machine that you have SiteLink installed on, at home on a laptop, wherever your computer is. Take our payment, and then print a lease. We have the normal lease that can be printed. We also have an e-sign option where that is an electronic lease. That's a default setting. And then we finish the move in. 